Well, welcome again to our weekly web series called The Bible and Tech here at GospelandGaming.org. I'm your host, Jacob Toman. It's wonderful to be here with you again. In our weekly web series every week, what we do is we take one book of the Bible and we ask one of our relevant technological questions of God's Word and we see what comes out of that. We take our big questions in life to God's Word. God's Word is what directs our lives, is what directs how we can live, how we can interact with one another, and how we make sense of the world. And so we take our big technological questions straight to God's Word, and we ask God's Word the big questions of our, of our lives. If God really is a big God and He can do great big things, as the Bible claims, then we want to bring our great big questions about technology, about our lives, and about the confusing things that we have to deal with day in, day out in our present digital age. And we want to ask those questions of God's Word and see what comes of that, see what kind of things God has prepared for us and prepared for his people for all time through God's word. Well, today we're looking at the book of 1 Samuel. We've walked through Genesis and Exodus and all the way through the wilderness and all the way to God's people coming to the promised land, being rescued out of Egypt, being pulled out of captivity, being brought into freedom by God. God has brought them into the promised land, and here the people of Israel have established themselves. They're now a nation, this nation that started from God's promise to one man and one woman, Abraham and Sarah, that they would eventually have a son, and would eventually that son would become a great nation, larger than counting all of the sand on the seashore, and larger than the stars in the sky. And God's fulfillment of that promise has been for the nation of Israel to come out of Egypt, go into the promised land, and now they're living there, but they've got enemies. They've got arch rivals, just like how Batman's got the Joker, just like how Spider-Man has got the Green Goblin, just like how the United Federation of Planets has the Romulans, all right, depending on which Star Trek episode you're watching, whether it's Deep Space Nine and it's the Dominion or whether it's the original series and the Klingons. Anyway, everyone's got a rival. Everyone's got a nemesis, whether you're Michigan or Ohio State. Anyway, we could go on for ages just talking about rivals. But Israel has got a rival. Their rival are the Philistines, and the Philistines have come up. They've come up with an army to attack the Israelites, and so the Israelites have drawn up a, an army and a battle plan, and they've come, and they've come out, and they've kind of set themselves up. And in the beginning of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, we read in verse 1 and 3 uh, just exactly what the picture is, what the scene is, as these two armies come into camp to, to meet one another. So if you've got a hardbound copy of the Bible, that's your tech that you choose to read the Bible off of, or whether you've got a Nook or an iPad, or whether you're just reading it off of your computer screen, Go ahead and open up either to BibleGateway.com or open up your Bible and follow along as we look at the story of David and Goliath and we bring our big technology-related questions to 1 Samuel chapter 17. It says there in verse 1, Now the Philistines gathered their armies for, bat for battle, and they gathered at Succo, which belongs to Judah, and they encamped between Succo and Azekah in Ephes Demamim. And Saul and the men of Israel, they were gathered, and they encamped in the valley of Ella and drew up the line of battle against the Philistines. And the Philistines stood on the side of the mountain, and the Israelites stood on the other side of a mountain, on the other side of a valley, with a valley between them. And there came out of the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath. All right. Now, if you're reading along with me, I hope you're feeling the tension. We've got two armies, pitch tents, ready to go. They've got their swords. They've got their provisions. They've got their armor. They've got their tech. They're equipped. They're geared. And they're ready to go. But at this pinnacle of a moment, at this precipice of history, what could change the course of this nation of Israel, they could be destroyed by this arch rival, the Philistines. And the Philistines, conversely, a whole nation, could be destroyed by the people of Israel. Battle lines are drawn, and one man comes out from the Philistine camp. Out of the Philistine camp, a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. Now you might be wondering, all right, how big is a cubit? This guy's six cubits. Come on, how many cubits is this? Is this cubits or cubits? Well, a cubit is about 18 inches or 45 centimeters. So this is a big dude. We're not talking about your average Joe Smo. We're not talking about a point guard in the NBA. We're talking about Shaq. We're talking about Yao Ming. We're talking about big, big guys weighing big, big weights and able to carry and do big, big destructive things. This champion, Goliath of Gath, he's not messing around, and he's a big dude. It says here in verse 5, He had a helmet of bronze on his head, and he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And we might ask, okay, how much is that? What's 5,000 shekels of bronze? Well, a shekel is about two-fifths of an ounce or 11 grams, if you weigh it out. So if you figure this guy's weighing how much? 
He's how tall, and he's wearing how much armor just from his helmet, his helmet on his head, and his coat of his mail. It's 5,000 shekels of bronze. This dude is a big dude. He's got big equipment. He's ready to go. He's equipped. The verse continues there in six, in verse 6 of chapter 17. He had a bronze armor on his legs, and he had a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's beam. All right, now we've got to think about this for a second, because we're not in the same technological time that 1 Samuel chapter 17 is. So we've got to think, okay, a weaver's beam. What does that even mean, that the Bible is comparing this guy's spear to a weaver's beam? We have to think about it this way. So the shaft of this guy's spear, so that's the part that you hold, the wooden part, not the metal part. The wooden part of this guy's spear is as big as a weaver's beam. What's a weaver's beam? Well, it was used, it's a technology that's used for weaving, for making clothes, for making linen, for making tents, for making garments, for making blankets. This was kind of like the industrial mechanical tool of this age for producing cloth and clothing. And so this guy's spear is as big as a mechanical tool at this point in time. This guy's spear is huge. Again, we're talking shack size proportions here, bigger than shack. And the spear head, so not even the, just the spear shaft. This guy's already got a huge spear shaft, but what's the head of the spear, the metal part, the pokey part of the spear? What's the, the deadly side of this technology? The spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron. This dude's huge. His weapons are huge. His technology is huge. It's advanced. This guy is a killing machine. His shield bearer went before him and he stood and he shouted to the ranks of Israel, why have you come out to draw up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me. If he is able to kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. The Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. What's Israel's reaction to all this? Here's a big dude that's bigger than Shaq. Here's a guy that's equipped. He's equipped to the nines, all right? He is ready to go. He is the, uh, you know, BC equivalent of Solid Snake, Metal Gear Solid's hero, or of Master Chief, Halo's hero, or he is the Bruce Willis of Die Hard. I mean, this guy is just equipped. He's decked to the nines. He is ready to fight. This guy has not come out uh, as piecemeal sheep saying, hey, let's, let's talk this over. No, he's ready to fight. He's ready to kill. The reaction of Israel, which should be that the king of Israel should come out and say, all right, I'm the king of Israel. I trust in the Lord. I know that the Lord has given you over into my hand today. We will fight. Instead, what's the reaction? What's the reaction a lot of the times with us when we're faced with difficult things in our technology in our lives? What is the, what is the reaction of us when we see the Internet, the promise of the Internet, the promise of technology, the ability to communicate across thousands and thousands of miles in a split second? What's our reaction to Facebook, to Twitter, to email, to cell phones, to the ability to be able to be on call at all times, and also the chain of being on call at all times. What do we do with the technology and available availability that's around us in today's digital world? A lot of the times what we as the church have done is we've responded the same way Saul and the Israelites have here in verse 11. It says, When Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. We hear about the Internet. We hear about Facebook. We hear about gaming addiction. We hear about social problems. We hear about the antisocial nature of a lot of folks that are introverts that sit in front of the computer screen. We hear about screen time, screen addiction, internet addiction, Facebook addiction, narcissism. We hear about all these things and we go, oh, technology, throw that junk out. If we could just get away from it all, maybe we, we could actually have some peace and some quiet. But that's not actually the message of 1 Samuel 17. And as we scroll down and we look, I'm scrolling down. You might have to flip over a couple pages. We go down all the way down to verse 38 of chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, we actually see that there's a different response. It's not throwing the technology away. It's not embracing the technology and saying, okay, all these bad things that can happen with technology, that's great. It's reclaiming technology and saying, this is a gift from God. How can we use it for God's glory? Instead of the king of the Israelites coming out and leading Israel into battle, or himself going and fighting this Philistine, King Saul hid. He hid and he was greatly dismayed. He hid behind his army. He hid behind his men. He was scared. He was too chicken to go out and fight this guy. Now, let's give Saul some credit. Goliath is a big dude. Technology is a big thing. We've got lots of things that we've got to deal with in today's world. Our children are having to grow up in an age where we have to ask questions like, hey, what kind of security password do I need to put on my iPad or on my computer? Because I've got a six-year-old that now has access to the Internet. And there's some places that I want to protect my six-year-old from on the Internet. 
Technology is a very dangerous thing, and it's a thing that we need to be aware about. Just like Goliath, huge, dangerous, big, but can it be used for God's glory? Can the technology that was used to protect Goliath be the same thing that's used for God's glory in the destruction of Goliath? Absolutely, and we'll read about that. There's a young man named David that comes down. He comes to visit some family, and sure enough, in the climax of this, this young man named David, he volunteers, and he goes forward. He doesn't wear armor. The armor that's given him by Saul, it doesn't fit. He's not ready. He hasn't practiced in it. This young man named David, he goes out, and he goes out with the technology that he's used to, that he's been equipped, that he knows how to use, that he's disciplined himself, that he's trained himself to use, and he's ready to fight. But he's not just fighting for his family. He's not just fighting for his friends. He's fighting for the Lord, to defend the Lord's honor. It says there in verse 40, Then David took his staff in his hand, and he chose five smooth stones from the book, from the brook, and he put them in his shepherd's pouch. His sling was in his hand, and he approached the Philistine. The Philistine moved towards and came near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. And it goes through this little piece of insults that the Philistine chucks at David right before the battle. And it's, it's kind of like the epic monologue in between your hero and the nemesis right at the end of the superhero movie where the, the nemesis is telling you all of these details and all this masterminded plan that he's got the good guy finally locked up. He's finally got everybody where he wants them. But actually we know what's going to happen. We know the good guy is going to pull it out. We know the good side will win. And, and we can look here and we can look at David and Goliath and we know what's going to happen. David retorts to the Philistine and to all of his insults, to all of his insults about David, to all of his insults about the people of Israel, to all of his insults about the Lord God. David retorts in this way in verse 45. You come at me with a sword and with a spear and with a javelin, but I come at you in the name of the Lord of the hosts, the God of the army of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down, cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves, not with the sword and the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. I don't know if that gives you goosebumps or not today, but our Lord, our God, he is a great God. And there are very difficult things that we have to struggle with. Our enemies in this world and our dangers that surround us with the technologies that are around us are very real. Whether that's busyness, whether that's narcissism, whether that's addiction, these things are all very real and we need to treat them very seriously. But we can take hope and know that our God is bigger than the challenges ahead. And our God has already won the war and he includes us and delights in including us in fighting the battle. It says there in verse 48, When the Philistine arose and came to draw near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. We've got these two forces. What happens when an unstoppable force meets with David? <laughs> what happens? David put out his hand in his bag and he took a stone, slung it, and he struck the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the ground. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone. And he struck the Philistine, and he killed him. There's a lot of technology in 1 Samuel chapter 17. There's a lot of technology in God's word. Technology that was being used by Goliath for wicked purposes, for defying God, for doing what Goliath wanted, what the Philistines wanted, for serving their own interests. And then there's David, who also used technology. It was a sling, and some stones, and a staff. Different technology. It looked a little bit different. But it was technology, and it was used for God's glory question that we have to ask ourselves today, as even as we've asked God's word, a difficult question about how do we approach the dangers in technology, we have to ask ourselves, are we using the technology around us for God's glory, because he's won the war, and he delights in including us in the battle, or are we using our technology for our own sinful purposes? Are we drawing up a battle line against God to use our technology for ourselves, or are we drawing up the battle line and standing on the side of the Lord, because we know that the battle is the Lord's, the war is the Lord's, and the technology that we've got around us, even this day, is the Lord's, and it's to be used for his glory and for his purposes. Thank you much. I hope you've enjoyed this week on the Bible and Tech here at gospelandgaming.org. We'll see you again next week.